Okay, a while ago, I made a video on the improper integral from negative 1 to 1 of 1 over x dx. And in that video, I told you guys that it was a debate between two answers, 0 or divergent. And in this video, I just want to say a few more things about it. I can tell you guys how you can legitimately answer it to a certain degree. And the short answer to that is that it depends on who you're talking to or what math class you're trying, okay? And before I do this with you guys, let me give you guys another example. Suppose I ask you, what is square root of negative 9? I believe you guys have two ways to answer this, right? Because the first way is that this right here has no answer. Has no answer. Because there's no real number multiplied by itself, you get a negative number. You cannot have a negative number in the square root, right? So the first way is that there is no answer, but the second way is after you have seen complex numbers, then you can say this right here is 3i. Well, how would you answer this question then? As I said, it depends on what class you are in or maybe who you are talking to. If you are talking to a pre-algebra student, square root of negative 9, you should tell them that this right here has no answer. You can be slightly more precise. You can say it has no real valued answer. That's perfectly okay, but you shouldn't show them 3i, right? And of course, once you study the imaginary number, the complex number, starting in algebra 2 or so, then you can say this is equal to 3i, and then you continue. Especially in complex analysis, you use the i, right? And now, let's move here. So last time, I told you guys, one of the ways to answer this was that you can say this is 0, and the second way is that you can just go ahead and say this right here diverges. And I will tell you guys that right here, if you are in Cal 2, Cal 3 or so, anything before pure math, I'll just say before, like the upper division, usually this thing I'm going to tell you is usually in the upper division math classes. So in example, if you are in, if you are in Cal 2, right? So it's like if you're in Cal 2 or so, then you should answer this right here as that it diverges and then you move on. Well, right here, people think that this is zero. It's because of the area that I showed you guys in the previous video. But that's actually what we call the Cauchy. So let me just see if I can spell that Cauchy. Principle value. Okay? And this right here, as I said, is usually learned in analysis, which is the upper division math class. If you have seen this, then the way to answer it is that the Cauchy principle value to this integral is zero. This right here is just a way to assign values to divergent integrals. As I said, it's just a way to assign values to some divergent integrals. And in this case, it is zero, the Cauchy principle value. It's just that like once you have the complex numbers, it's a way to assign answers to this kind of situations. So that's pretty much my answer to that. So hopefully uh, this clears some of the debates, but you guys can still leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys think about this right here. So for my students, when you see this kind of improper integrals, you should see, you should, you should answer it as it diverges and move on. That's it. And wait for the days that you guys can legitimately say this is zero, but you should also quote that the Cauchy principle value of that integral is zero. That's it.